like kind of a whirlwind. All right, well, let's just go ahead. We're gonna jump in. And uh, for those of you guys who don't know Q, his first name's Michael, he goes by Q. Uh, Kinonis is his last name. Q, join us. Q, has it been a year yet? Will, will it be a year yeah. in January? Uh, actually, so it was, you guys can hear me, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, no, it was, it was just before Christmas, actually. We kept it kind of mum, right? Uh, because we were in transition away from um, a, a different team that we were with or whatever. But um, no, it was, it was just before the new year. But we really kind of kick-started everything at the beginning of the year. Okay, awesome. So Q came to us um, not quite a year ago uh, from, another, from another brokerage. And um, Q, when did you obtain your license? Uh, 2014. Okay. Yeah. So certainly, you know, a seasoned agent, an experienced agent, you've been in the business for six years. Um, but, but something that I want to share with you guys and I, and Q, I hope you're okay with this. Got to sing your praises a little bit, you know, uh, all... well, I have music for this moment. <laughs> Are you ready for <laughs> it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. You can start anytime you're ready. Right, here um, I go. I'm just kidding. I'll pause that. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, <laughs> Yeah, next time I next time I do one of these, I'd like to like play some music and everybody just yeah. flick their lights on and off before I start speaking, just to get me in the mood. You know what? Great. You just gave me a really incredible idea, Lisa. I think we need to add to the agenda. And Q, I feel like I need to apologize that we we didn't have this ready for you, but I feel like we need to e ask each of our speakers if they have like some build up music that that they want. To play. <laughs> yeah, great, that's so right? funny that you mentioned that because I was gonna play "All I Do Is Win," but I couldn't find the clean yeah. version, so I was like. <laughs> Yeah. We're just going to wait until next time. <laughs> All right. I don't, I don't think there's any appropriate like walkout music for me that would not have cuss words in it, but we, we can move on. All right. <laughs> um, so uh, what, what really struck me, Q, as I was getting ready uh, to moderate this was looking at your numbers and holy cow, I don't even know, you know, if you realize quite yet or how closely you track your numbers. I'll speak for myself. Mm -hmm. You know, when I'm in production or when I was in production, I didn't necessarily, I, I was just all about the next deal and, you know, and, and, and getting business done. I wasn't always following my numbers very closely. Right. Um, but you will more than double your production and closed volume this year. You, so I have uh, all of 2019, you closed just under 6 million, 5.8 million in 2019. Year to date closed so far. You're at just over 8.5 million, which means that you're going to more than double your business this year. And that is incredible. And when I'm talking about doubling your business, I'm not talking about going from 1 million to 2 million or 2 million to 4 million. You're going from 5.8 million to, uh, you know, my guess is going to be you're going to land well over 10, maybe closer to 12 million. I don't know. Maybe you have some more insight on what you think your, how your year is going to shake out. But in any event, it's increased substantially. And I guess my first question is, um, what do you attribute that to? Um, you know, I would say for us, mostly it has been uh, Sam's belief in what her role is inside the business, right? Because where we were at before, um, I think Sam would have told you she was helping me with my business, right? <laughs> and then we went to Dallas and, I, and it, it was a not so scary moment. I was, I was waiting for it, but I could see this change in Sam while she was listening to some speakers. And basically it went from her mentality was that she's helping me with my business to this is her business, right? And so because of that, it, the, the reins that she took on handling certain aspects of the business helped me considerably just focus on what I'm particularly, particularly better at, which is more the uh, minutia of deals, not so much the day-to-day the -day tasky stuff, right? And so that allowed me a, a lot more uh, freedom to be creative. Um, she's having fun with it as well. You know, so I think that's, that's the biggest contributing factor is that it became instead of a Sam and a supportive role to um, Sam kind of pulling us both up by our bootstraps and moving us forward, you know? Okay. Awesome. Uh, you mentioned Dallas. For those of you who might not be familiar what that means, what was in Dallas that you attended? Yeah. So it wasn't the, uh, not mega camp, whatever they call that one. Family reunion. Family reunion. That's right. Yeah. And yeah, it was, it was immense. I mean, it was the, the, the amount of training we got, um, you know, I, I tend to lean more towards the mindset training than sort of the, the task oriented uh, training, but there was a good mix of all of the above, you know, very like hands-on, this is how you do it, especially with like command, which was awesome. That's another 
you know, for, we're talking very specifically what has helped my business stay very sort of um, controlled and monitored, monitored. Yeah. Um, it would be through the command system. So. Okay. I love that. Awesome. So what I'm hearing is uh, you found an added leverage yeah. in Sam. Uh, yeah. You got Sam's buy-in to the vision. Right. And what that did was that created, you know, some fire and passion that, you know, she has brought to the table um, and taking ownership, you know, in the business right alongside with you. Correct, yeah. Okay. Awesome. Um, for those who are, are with us that are newer to the business, would you mind sharing with them, Q, what you did as a brand new agent in order sure. to get business or find business? Yeah. I almost quit. That's what, that's what really happened. Uh, <laughs> they threw me in well, a closet. Glad they didn't. Yeah. They threw me in a closet and said, good luck. Right. And uh, so a quick little story as to why, like I found success um, early in my career. What I did is actually, I, for me, what, what helped was finding a team, right? Um, Cause what I knew that needed to happen for me was that I needed to get in front of people. As soon as I got in front of people, I felt like that's it, right? It's a slam dunk. I'll be fine. But where do you get in front of people? So, um, you know, trying to figure that all out, I had uh, been fired from the car business, which is the best thing that ever happened to me, but then it was like trying to suck me back in, right? Because money's good there, but you have no personal life. So there was this um, um, draw for the money, but I didn't want to necessarily go back. So basically what I did is I, I cornered uh, Dan Kingsley and, and he's not very big, so it was pretty easy, you know, he's not, you know, <laughs> but, uh, and I was like, dude, I want to be on, a, on your team. What's going on? And we went through some, some stuff to uh, be allowed to join their team because I was already with Counselor. And then basically it was just um, following a, um, a very diligent uh, lead follow-up plan. You know, their, their format that they were running there, uh, very similar to where we're at now with what Command can do. Command is a lot more robust, I think, um, than the system that they're on. But it was just being very diligent about making the calls and learning how to make those calls and, and having a certain mindset about when I made those calls, how they, they worked for me. And I can, I can kind of jump into that a little bit later. I think there's a question where we might touch on that. So yeah, for me early on, it was being very diligent with that lead gen stuff. I was also very fortunate too, though, that um, people who know Sam um, know, found out that I was selling in real estate. And so that was a nice little end for the referral business, right? Because um, for the most part, we're still close to 80% of our business is referral based, you know, so it's from wow. our school. That's amazing. That's, yeah. that's really amazing. Okay. Yeah. Her awesome. friends were awesome. My friends sucked. They're all <laughs> like, my friends were like, great, Q, that's awesome. You're going to do great, man. But I got this dude, I've been using him for years and they all dumped me right away as their realtor. Didn't even give me a shot, but, uh, Sam's friends were completely different. Now they all regret it. I'm sure. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing fine. <laughs> yeah. I'd say so. You're doing just fine. Um, okay. Well, thanks for sharing that. How about, um, what would you say now, you know, after having been in the business for six years, you know, yeah. uh, increasing your volume the way that you have and building your business, what yeah. would you say right now is your best source for buyer leads? Okay. So for buyer leads, um, I, I think when we're looking at that, I mean, I'm using the, the Facebook leads very well. Um, Chris, uh, who's on our team is already, uh, Set a couple of appointments, only one showed, but he's one for one. So he got assigned buyer uh, immediately upon his, his first uh, um, sit down with somebody. And it's, it's actually kind of cool. If you formulate, a, like, if you look at his production currently and what he's accomplished just in a short time, if you were to keep on the throttle the way that he is, you know, he'll, he'll stand to make over 100 grand this year on the team. This yeah. year. And when did he start yeah. with your team? Like four weeks ago. Okay. Right? Yeah. So when you're looking at what his production will be three months from now, based on what he's done in calls, reaching people, appointments set and kept and signed buyers. He's got two buyers now. He actually signed a, um, <laughs> Chris, was it your mom that went to the, to the sale or were you with her? It was my mom actually. So she went to a garage sale about, I don't know, six blocks from her house. And the lady is an older lady and just mentioned that she was thinking about moving, you know, they're older looking for a one level house. So um, anyway, I basically cold called them and stopped by and brought some chocolates. And anyway, we signed a purchase agreement yesterday and we've got a listing appointment with them on Thursday. So Boom. just random. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Well, it's not, not so random. I mean, you, you went after the business, you, you know, it's well, good to have lots of bird, 
you know, I was going to say bird dogs, but then I realized we're talking about your mom. But it, it's nice to have lots of people, boots on the ground out there, right, to be singing your praises and sharing, you know, your story and who you are. I mean, I hope you're taking mom to a really nice dinner or something. <laughs> Definitely will be, yes. <laughs> she'd, be, she'd be better served having him cook. He's quite the cook. Oh, okay. He'd enjoy her meal better if you were cooking. <laughs> oh, and that's really sweet. Coming from a mom, yes, you need to cook mom dinner. That's amazing. So, Q, those leads that Chris is working then, you mm -hmm. know, where exactly are they coming from? Are those coming from mm -hmm. the boosted Facebook ads that you're running or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we've got um, two ads that are running off of our current listing that's doing really well. One is a uh, renter conversion uh, one, and, and that one's, those are going to be a lot of nurture leads for the most part. Those are going to be ones where you try to take somebody from, not thinking about purchasing a home and maybe not being quite in a position to purchase a home to building them into a qualified buyer, right? So those, those are like nurtured leads, but those are just, that's just one of the hoppers we know we got to fill, right? So you want hopefully to run into some can buy now buyers, uh, but when you're looking at leads um, and, and it's just the mindset about it too. Like I always believe that somebody's just somewhere in their process of eventually buying it might be they want to buy something now it might be they're not looking for 10 years but they're thinking about their next home more than likely right so even when we're making our our calls and i can jump into that later um our mindset about how we approach that is that they're not cold calls um but we can we can touch base on that in a little bit so we're uh it's the the facebook leads that are, are primarily our our main source for him and what's nice about those two is that Sorry, go ahead, what? No, no, you go ahead. Yeah, okay, so, the, the, you know, I want to be real about what leads are so people don't jump into them and get frustrated early on, okay? So for the most part, and excuse my cussing, lead gen is kind of shit work, okay? Because what you're doing is you're reaching out to a bunch of people that are on their phones, you know, wherever they're doing their thing, and they click on something, and then oftentimes they want to tell you, oh, I was just looking, I just clicked on it, blah, 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 whatever, right? And they want to dump you before having a legitimate conversation, because they're so bombarded, but there's a way to approach the phone call that you make that allows you to have an in so that you can have a very genuine conversation with them because that's what you want to have happen. But you have to be prepared for the fact that lead gen is mostly just about activity breeding activity, right? You're just trying to stay in motion, right? Keep that momentum going. So Chris and I talk about that a lot about how it is just staying in motion, building momentum, treating people right, and what happens is things start coming back. So that's awesome. That's amazing. Are you still keeping track? I know at one time, mm -hmm. you know, we asked to share the stat with us. Are you still keeping track on average yeah. what your leads are costing you when you run one of oh, those boosted yeah. ads? I'll, uh, let me, I'm just, you guys, can you st see me when I do that? Yeah, we can see you. Okay. Let me just pull up my. Uh, it tracks it for you, doesn't here. it? Yeah, that's the nice thing, you know, like being able to track this. And I use, we just recently used how our paid ads are performing as a way to get buy-in from a lender. Yes. And so also to have them help us pay for our have, have you yep. used them yet to win listings? Have you considered using your stats yet to win listings? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So for example, when we were sitting down with Chris's clients, I pulled up our, our command system because I knew that they were potentially going to interview some kind of, what we'll just call them big hitters after us, right? I, but I showed them how we have, you know, somewhere close to, so, well, several hundred active uh, leads that are generated that are, that are looking through homes on our website or have communicated with us that they're looking for a home. And specifically off of uh, an ad that's very similar to the price point that they're going to be at. So it was nice to be able to show them, you know, we're not just saying we'll generate leads for you and bring eyes to your home. Here's proof, you know. Yeah, so showing the so command powerful. system, I think, if you look at the right pages. Yeah, yeah, it's powerful for sure. Okay, so you, I think I interrupted you and I apologize, but I got excited about the thought of, you know, yeah. I, I hope agents are listening and recognizing the power and being able to share those sorts of things as a point of difference between us and our competitors. But I think you were looking up the, uh, your ad yeah. spend and the average. Okay, so on the last two, um, per click, uh, the, just the listing one was 26 cents a click. 
um, per click on the renter conversion, it's 46 cents. But when we're talking about lead capture rate and my cost, so on a $200 ad spend, I got just under 50 leads. So it cost me about four bucks. On a $500 ad spend, and this one's uh, just terminated, um, so I got to start a new one, but uh, 68 leads and seven, $7 per lead on that. That's insane. If you convert just one in each of those campaigns, they will, yeah. I mean, pay for those ads times, I don't know how many. Yeah, well, uh, Chris's uh, buyer that he got from that and signed, um, her, her one deal, um, even looking at how, you know, with the team structure and splits and everything, even if I just dumped 100% of what her potential sale um, would mean to us back into the system, um, that means that I, I potentially have enough buying power to generate enough leads for Chris for the entire year just on that, right? So like my, my concern right now is not overspending on leads until I have my team a little bit more bulked up to keep up with the, the amount of leads we're getting in to actually make these calls and communicate with people. Because what, what I don't want to have people have happen is that they, they through communicating through Facebook, have interest in, in whatever I'm advertising to them. And then we don't show them the courtesy of reaching out to them, right? So Absolutely. I don't want that to be their, their experience with us. I love it. You're building your team in a very purposeful way, which leads me to my next question. I know that mm -hmm. you've already introduced Chris somewhat. Maybe yeah. everyone doesn't completely understand his role. You talked about Sam. Can you share with us who is a part of your team and what their roles are, what it looks like? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, doing a lot of the admin stuff for us, but she does work with quite a few of her friends and buyers and stuff. So that keeps her day-to-day -day kind of fun and not sort of just stuck in one lane, which is super awesome. Um, and then she's made it very clear that she's in a handle paperwork. So, um, so we'll let her do that. Um, the, uh, Chris is a buyer's agent, um, but also, you know, with my buyer's agents, I want to give them the opportunity to um, experience what it is to go through the listing side of things. So they're not unpaid on the listing side. I do try and give them some, uh, some tools there too. Did you need some? Your keys? Uh -oh. Is that Sam? Yeah. Hey, Sam. <laughs> she is not going on camera. Uh, no, I won't put <laughs> you on the spot. I'm just okay. <laughs> Love you, babe. So, so Sam's doing that. And then, yeah, Chris is a buyer's agent. I've got uh, Jamie um, Gonzalez, a good friend of mine. He's a little ways out. And so is Tara. They're, they're working on getting through their courses. But more immediately, Brian, uh, and I'm really excited about him. Brian Ramirez is going to come on board. Um, superb guy. Yep. What's that? Enjoy. Yeah, and then and then Joy. Yeah, and Joy is going to be probably a little bit behind Brian just because she's uh, she's helping out with Crave and their opening. She's a server there. Yep. Um, and then uh, also is pregnant again. So um, yeah. she's got another little one coming. Yep. Yeah. So I told her to take her time, get sleep, get sleep, and then you can do your course three. Absolutely. <laughs> so. So you're in growth mode right now. And, and exactly. are you bringing those folks on as additional buyer's agents? Thank you. Yeah, those will be buyer's agents. And then um, my hope is, especially with how well things are going for Chris, that, that we would quickly, maybe even within that first year, build him up to be kind of a team lead as well and do more of the listing side. Okay. Because um, I feel that we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna build pretty quickly. So. Right. So a lot of work happening behind the scenes right now, but yeah. I would imagine with the ultimate goal of, with you adding all of this leverage to your mm -hmm. business and to your team, that, you know, you're going to get to, uh, you know, a certain point to where, you know, you're also buying back some of that time, so to speak. Because I know that that's really important to you, yeah. um, is having that balance, you know, right. with your family and yeah. work life. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, you know, I don't know that I'd work less because I, I am kind of a bit of a busy body. Um, um, I'm not naturally energetic, so I supplement a lot in case anybody wonders. Uh, I take a lot of vitamins. But um, the, uh, yeah, the goal, I think, would be to just allow myself to focus on the things that I want to focus on, right? right. Um, and to give agents opportunities that I felt weren't necessarily afforded to me early on in my career. And what I understand about building a team, and I've said this to Chris and, and everybody that I've talked to, there's a good chance that it'll go one of two ways, right? And I only want it to go one of these two ways. Th there's a third option that's really not an option, which is that they sort of flunk out of real estate. Because if they flunk out, then I feel I failed them. So I don't want to see that. 
but they might, they might get so good that they look at what I'm providing them and say, I don't know if being on a team's for me. Right. And then at that point, I'm just going to have to be a proud Papa and let them do their thing and just hope that they kick it with color Williams and, and stay on board with the, uh, you know, the bigger team. Right. Um, but understanding that they may go do their own thing or they might stick it out. And if they stick it out, I have to do the right things to make sure to keep them. Right. So, um, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how this this growth works, and and you know my focus being on providing them everything I can without holding anything back might lead me to a point where I end up just training some really good agents that do their own thing. But I guess that's just par for course. Par for the course, right? Par for the course. Yeah. Creating opportunities, you're creating opportunities for other people, and that's always going to come back to you twofold, regardless of whatever path they ultimately end up choosing. And I know that you know that, uh, and it's why people are attracted yeah. to want to work with you and be on your team. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> That's all right. No worries. So Q, what does your typical day look like if you were to share your typical day? Yeah. Um, I get caffeinated really fast. <laughs> um, so I, I, you know, I wake up, I have my, uh, there's this, uh, if you haven't tried it, it's called uh, amino energy. It's very, be, be careful though. It's kind of addictive because it's like waking up and getting to drink Kool-Aid. Like as a kid, if you could, you would have. Right. And now I'm an adult and I can, and it's actually like a, uh, health drink. So that, that gets a little dangerous, but yeah, I get caffeinated and I'll check emails and stuff a little bit, but I mostly just relax in the mornings. Um, what I try to ease my day into is the, the, the afternoons and the evenings. Cause that's where it really kind of gets super busy for me. Um, and I make sure to, to make time for myself, um, kind of selfish with my, my mornings and, and my days. Um, so I get to the gym as often as I can. Um, man, they're persistent. They want to buy a house. I'm sure they do. I, I have a really good one in plain view. All right. Um, but uh, yeah, so um, so yeah, my days are, are spent making sure that I have some me time. Um, I also try to make sure that when, so I have my son 50-50. Um, so I try to make sure that the nights that I have him, I don't really plan a hell of a lot, right? So then like uh, today is an example of after this, I'll go, I have a meeting I have to go to for um, kind of a supplemental inspection of a basement. Um, prior to that, I'll try to get to the gym. Then I have a power hour with Chris where we're going to sit here at my house because we're, we're build out, building out an office right now and do a power hour where we, uh, we just make calls on our leads. What's nice about kind of sitting down with somebody is that um, it gives you a little bit more energy you know, and confidence, you know, then kind of sitting by yourself. It's really hard when you're doing the, the lead gen stuff to daily just sit there in that grind by yourself and make these, these calls, you know? So, um, so we'll do some uh, lead gen stuff and then uh, I'll spend the evening with the kiddo on, on the nights that I'm not uh, with Gabriel. I teach uh, kickboxing. So I think another thing that people, um, need to do as realtors is be kind of like proactive about getting involved with some sort of community, whether it's a CrossFit gym, um, a regular gym, um, you know, a bowling league or something like that. Um, those moments of like socializing are, I find to be very good practice in my sales life too. Right. Absolutely. Cause you don't want to treat, you don't want to treat clients any different than you would in like, like you want to, you want to be able to chum it up with your clients the same as you would a friend at, at your gym, you know? A hundred percent. I say it all the time and I'm a firm believer. People want to do business with people who they know, like, and trust. Right. And are always going to pick those people, whether they're a seasoned agent of, you know, 20 years or a brand new agent of, of two weeks. They want to do business with people they know, like, and trust. So I love that you shared that. And, and, and I agree, you know, get involved in the community, get involved in, in different things. And mm -hmm. um, you don't even have to, and I would imagine, I know you, you don't walk around saying, hi, I'm Q, I'm in real estate. You're looking to buy or sell. They just right. know because, you know, uh, they like you. And, and when you like people, you want to know more about them. And I'm sure that when they learn you're in real estate, yeah. you're the first person that they think of because of that. Yeah. Oh, one second. You knock it off. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on one second. Get yeah, no worries. Hey. hey, Chris, is it cold at that beach that you're at? You got on like a little beanie and you're at it the is. beach. <laughs> the air conditioning is blowing on me, so yes. It's kind of windy. <laughs> the, palm, the palm tree is kind of, you know, moving in the wind there, so it must be really. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's 
That's awesome. Okay, sorry. You're okay. probably gonna hear him in the background. He has a he has like a nervous energy about him anytime he hears like a door open or somebody lock their car outside. No, no worries at all. All right, I'm gonna move on to the next question if that's okay. Um, yeah, sure. What are your tips for a great buyer presentation? And how yeah, do you okay. do buyer presentations? Yeah. All right. So, um, you know, we have on our team sort of a, a supplemental um, like protection package that we provide and it kind of depends on how things are going. Right. It's sometimes it's really nice to start with the fun stuff before you get them signing. You get through, you know, you'll go through like a, what are you looking for sort of conversation? And then here's the good news. Here's what we provide. And then when I go into my um, actual signing of the, the rep docs, it's very short and sweet. You know, I, I did finance for a long time at the car dealership. And what you find is people really don't want to be read to. Like you can't go line by line through this thing. You know, they just want to kind of get through it. So it's a very um, quick overview. And then it's a lot of, okay. And, and then uh, just sign here, set the phone uh, pen down and you slide it over and wait and don't say anything and let them sign. Right. Because the thing that, that you have to remember when you're presenting this to people, they want to buy a house, you sell houses. So there's this natural thing that, that they want to see occur. So the only thing that you're potentially doing is giving them reasons not to want to work with you, right? So just don't do that. All right, keep it real simple. Don't be tentative about your approach of having them sign. All right, sign here, sign there. Great. And, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sign this one that says that I want to be your guy. You know, is one of my lines, that sort of thing. Um, but, but I keep it short and sweet. And I can, I can do maybe separately a, um, a training on that uh, for anybody that wants to uh, meet up and just see what mine looks like. Um, but it's very brief and very quick so that we can get to what they really want, which is to go look for homes, you know. Awesome. That's amazing. And I agree. I like how you present it to them just very matter-of-factly. You're yeah. not saying like, okay, and sign here. Right. Pause, pause, awkward pause, right? right. Um, I, I would venture to say that most people, when you bring that confidence that you do to the table, just mm -hmm. follow suit because they're looking for someone who they feel comfortable with and is going to take care of them. And the, yeah. when that confidence comes across, you know, the table or wherever it is you're meeting, they're just like, okay, where do I sign? You know, one of the things that I always say in my presentation, it's actually also one of the things that we point out in our supplemental protection package, but there's a cancellation guarantee, right? So people don't necessarily want to feel like they are completely tied down necessarily. So, you know, what I always tell people is like, look, you know, the thing is about this is that you can cancel anytime. You shoot me a text and you're like, Q, I don't like how you did it. your hair this morning. It's not working for me. And I'm gonna be like, well, that's kind of mean. I probably don't want to work with you either. And we'll be done. You know, it Great. is that simple. Yeah. So that gets them to sort of just sort of relax and know that, okay, you know, he's, uh, and when you say that, you know, the thing that, that, that I feel that it, it tells people is that I know that you could leave me at any point in time. Therefore, I'm going to work hard to make sure you don't. Absolutely. Most realtors don't mention the cancellation part of it, right? Yeah. How many times have we heard somebody say, well, I, I had to use them because I signed a contract. Yeah. You know, which is not actually true. And I, I hate that realtors do that to people. I've, I have um, only on two occasions uh, fired clients, but I have fired clients, you know, and they had the right to, to fire us too. So I, I'm mindful of that. That's awesome. I like that approach. Um, I'm curious, what do you consider your best value proposition when you're meeting with clients? I, I think it becomes very apparent very early on that I am, I, that I give a damn, right? So there is a line in, in my presentation where I tell people, you know, the thing that I want you to remember is that I don't care. Um, I don't want you to buy the wrong house. In fact, I would rather you didn't buy a house than buy the wrong house from me. Right. So um, there was something that happened to me early on in, in my career where I could tell that the pressure I was putting on myself to perform by getting sales to bring home money, right. Was, putting this tension in the air that was not actually helping me get to my goal. So I said this once wanting to believe it, you know, like sincerely meaning to believe it, but it took a little while for that to like settle in that I can't 
force people to buy a home that they don't want. So I'm really just in the process of sort of guiding them on their journey. And I've got to let go of this home has to be the one, right? So I think that when you approach your, your presentation, when you're going through things and you make such a statement, they get a lot more relaxed that, that your primary goal is to actually take care of them rather than, um, you know, to make money. I absolutely love that. I often say that we're there to, you know, advocate, protect, and educate our clients. It sounds like that's what you do. And if they ultimately end up buying a house or selling a house through us, well, that's a byproduct of us advocating, educating, and protecting them. So um, I absolutely love that that is your mantra and your approach. Um, I'm curious, though, what advice for setting expectations do you give buyers early on? Sure. Um, so I, I think first it's really important to talk about setting the stage, right? Cause, um, Chris and I had a conversation about this yesterday because the people that he met at the, uh, the garage sale had somebody show them multiple homes, but they signed with us and that particular agent didn't never even put buyer rep, um, uh, paperwork in front of them. Right. So with Chris um, and, and all my agents, it's gonna be this way, but we try to set the stage. They will meet us at our office or at a location before we ever say, yeah, I'll meet you at this house. That, that does not happen first. Obviously listings are a little bit different. You'll go to their home, but when it comes to a buyer, um, we want to immediately set the stage that we're gonna handle this professionally. You're gonna come in, we're gonna have a conversation. First of all, what you're looking for, let's make sure you're actually prepared to buy. And then we're gonna go looking at houses because otherwise you're just spinning your wheels, you know, showing people houses and they, they, you don't have rep agreements and they can do what, what the, these people did and sign with us instead. Absolutely, absolutely. So setting those expectations ahead of time, uh, again, yep. it speaks to building that confidence in them that, that, that you are that professional. And it also protects you and your time from potentially, you know, just running out and, and meeting with someone to show a home that might not even be qualified. Yeah. Yeah, sure. absolutely. Okay. And, and also, so yeah, that, that first, what's that? Go ahead. So, yeah. So that first meeting has to be something that you can control where the, the environment, right. And lead the conversation because otherwise, um, and, and you'll still have clients that want to just take the lead. I, I've had a, a, in numerous occasions where I could send them a million and one houses and they'll only want to look at the ones that they sent me that they want to see. Fine. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> you know, I'm okay with that. But yeah, so that, uh, that part's important. Is, is, and then in terms of the process, you know, I, I try to let people know, it's interesting. Some people, they'll look at a few houses, they put in one offer, they get that house. Other people, it's like house after house, they just lose and they lose and they lose, right? Um, and it isn't necessarily that they have bad offers. It's just some people kind of get in that rut, you know? Um, but we've lifted people out and they've always been happy. So letting people know that it's, it's not the same for everybody, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I find that when you have those expectation conversations up front, that when you do have to have the tough ones, or if they are yeah. becoming disenfranchised, so to speak, because they're getting frustrated, it's a lot easier to bring them back to that expectations conversation and remind them of yeah. that conversation. Awesome. Okay. I'll, I'll add one more thing there too. Like I also, in our um, presentation, make sure to let them know that you know, it doesn't matter where you find the listing, we can help you through that process, like for sale by owners, for example, right? Um, let them know, hey, Zillow, it's crap for looking up the current status of houses on the MLS. Don't use it for that, but you could look at it for, for sale by owners. And we have good luck with those because when we are working with them, we treat them with respect. And, and in negotiations, I always tell them when it comes to negotiations, we find that the only way for you to win is if it's a win-win. If I get somebody on the defensive on the other side that we're trying to buy a house from, um, you know, it's like, it's like meeting a, 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 an animal in the wild and putting them on the defenses. They're, they're not going to give you any ground. You're, you're up for a, a, a battle, right? But uh, if you treat people with respect and we let them know that that's how we win most of our deals. I always say that all the time. We win more deals than we lose, but it happens because we treat people with, with respect. Um, and so that piece and then the for sale by owner piece so that they know it doesn't matter where we find this home, you know, come to us to prepare, present and negotiate on your behalf. It's right there in, in our script. And that way you don't wind up in a situation where 
they start doing circles on a deal on the outskirts of what you have going on and you find yourself trying to catch up, you know? Yeah, I'm, I'm so happy to hear that you guys do that because I think in the climate that we're in right now with multiple offers and buyers having to uh, oftentimes ride on multiple homes before they get them, uh, they get frustrated. Yeah. And to your point, they start kind of circling the perimeter and start, you know, out of desperation in some cases, you know, looking for other avenues yeah. and run across those for sale by owners. So having that conversation with them on the front end that like, Hey, you Zillow look for sale by owners. We can represent you there as well is so smart. So, so smart. Thanks for sharing that. Um, speaking of frustrated buyers and the climate that we're in right now, what are you hearing from your clients as some of their biggest concerns in, you know, the market right now? Yeah. I mean, I, I still struggle with it, right? Where you look at some houses, you're like, I showed that house four years ago and it costs what now, you know? So you're dealing with a lot of that, like somebody who maybe has been looking at the market for a while, um, got hung up on a home that they went after, a a while ago, the price for that home compared to a similar home now, I think is, um, is kind of, kind of frustrating, but the, you know, the, the, the caveat with that currently right now is that the interest rates are also incredibly dirt cheap. I mean, I only, uh, refied my house, what, um, a year ago and it's already almost two points less, you know, um, in, in terms of rate and stuff. So, you know, it's just, it is what it is. You know, it, the, the thing of it is a lot of people say, well, when, when's the good time to sell your home? Well, when you need a different one. <laughs> or, For mean, whatever reason. Yeah. I mean, you know, if you're going to let the market dictate when you're doing stuff, then, then you're just going to end up kind of stuck. You got to go when you got to go, you know? Um, and the same is true with buyers and stuff. I'm just like, well, do you think there's going to be, you know, the, the bubble? Everybody's always asking about the bubble. When, when's it going to pop? And I, I always tell people, I'm like, if I knew that, I wouldn't be selling you houses. I'd be crushing it in Vegas. Like I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't have to be here if I knew, if I was, you know, prophetic like that. So um, I think that that piece, the other thing for buyers, buyers are worried about how to, how to compete um, in multiple office situations. And we've got our little sort of tricks and we, we talked them through how to um, properly prepare and present. And, and also when they're going through that process, I try to give them, you know, some norms. Hey, we could expect them to, you know, chances are they're, they're going to say no to this offer. What we're hoping for is that they come to the table with a counter offer, you know, that sort of thing. So, um, you know, that's obviously a situation where you're not in a multiple. And then when you're in a multiple, then it's just, you know, Hey, we got to be all in and, and you got to be comfortable with, with saying this is the best that I can do and, and knowing that you may not get the home. I can't, I can't guarantee that us going all in necessarily means you, you win the home, you know? Absolutely. Again, it's about setting those expectations. You know, you had mentioned earlier that um, I think this was the percentage you used that 80% of mm -hmm. your business comes from referral. So I'm just curious, what do you do or are you doing to stay top of mind with your database and with your clients? Yeah. So, um, and, and I've been working with Chris on this too. Like you could spend a lot of time and it, it can become a lot of dead time too, if you overdo it, but you could spend a lot of time just following up with leads, but you need to connect with your people, your sphere, try to have lunch with them, uh, try to go out with them, hang out with them. Um, those people are going to be your best advocates always. Right. In terms of my previous clients, I mean, a lot of them follow us on Facebook and stuff and they see that the things that we do beyond um, selling homes or, 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 you know, there's things that we care about, right? Our community, we absolutely love pets. So that's a big thing um, that, that people re really seem to enjoy. And hopefully we can get back out to Paws and Claws and continue doing those Fridays and the Forever Home uh, series. But um, that sort of stuff, you know, um, and, and then I have a, a social media uh, manager in house that will, will do some things. And what I've told them is that I want the things that we post about to be genuine interest to us. Right. So I love solar electric power, uh, all things green. So that sort of stuff, um, big into health and wellness. So, you know, we want to touch base on some of those items. Um, Sam and I are, are a little bit, uh, DI wires, right? So anything that we can do to talk about that. And so those the things that we do just to share honest uh, content, you know, I think that that helps us stay on, on top of their minds. 
It doesn't hurt that Sam's on the radio in the morning either, right? So that, that certainly helps. <laughs> well, yeah, but you're also, you know, you're speaking to things that you guys have a passion for and that you're mm-hmm. passionate about. And, you know, I think that that reads into other things really nicely. So it goes back to your recommendation earlier of, you know, getting involved in something, you know, and being an attractor from that perspective. So all good stuff. I've I've got two questions left. It's been so amazing so far. And I I feel a bit selfish with the time that we're taking away from your day today, but bear with me. I just have two more left. One of them is what piece of advice can you give um, an experienced agent? We have some experienced agents on here also to help them grow their business. Yeah. um, It's actually right above me here. Like have a short memory, right? If you have to drink some, some wine and go to bed and forget about it. You know, the, um, one of the things that bothers Sam quite often, and it, what bothers Sam is how it doesn't bother me when we have somebody choose to work with a different person, right? Mm-hmm. And what I've always told her is that, you know, people are not always going to work with us. We can't get 100% of them, but I also don't want to work with people who don't want to work with me. So I'm over it and you should right. be too, right? So having a, a, a short memory has, has um, really done me solid because there are times when it's really tough and you don't see... Where is this going to, you know, you get, it's got to be two parts. One part is a short memory. And then the other part is just staying um, like proactive about your business and just like staying the course and knowing that it's going to be okay. But you have to have that, that mindset and don't get lost in, in those ruts where um, every deal has to count because people will feel that tension. Uh, you just can't allow that uh, to happen. Um, I think too often, and you see it, we all run into it, but you, you run into realtors that have been just sort of tainted by bad experiences. And that one bad experience is why they never do this now, you know, and, and why they handle this a certain way and why they treat everybody like this. And, uh, that doesn't do you any, any good to treat everybody like somebody who might uh, disappoint you. All that's going to happen is you're going to be off putting. Right. So. hundred percent. Yeah. Great advice. So same question, but Mm -hmm. for new agents, what's the one piece of advice you can give them to help them get into production as quickly as possible? Yeah. If if it's not working, change it, right? Your routine, if it's not working for you, change it. Don't be afraid to change it. I mean, you know, I have to stay incredibly flexible with my schedule, which is sometimes very frustrating because again, I'm kind of selfish with my me time. And, you know, sometimes that unfortunately gets, um, you know, I'm not perfect. And so you, you take that out on the ones you love, right? So you're just in a frustrated mode where, you know, I didn't get to work on my garage or I didn't get to get to the gym and stuff like that. But, um, you know, be flexible and, uh, um, if it's not working change, you know, and then also, uh, especially for new agents, go hang out with the fun, vibrant people that you want to emulate, you know, whatever it is that you feel is kind of missing, find somebody who's got that sort of thing and then kick it with them if you can, you know, um, don't chew up their time because that's not fair, but, um, you know, put yourself around people that, uh, that bring you up. That is such a great piece of advice. And I, I did a post this morning. You are the sum of the five people you spend the most time with, right? Yeah. So, you know, take a look at your surroundings and are you surrounded by people with that abundant mindset that inspire you? Mm-hmm. Or are you surrounding yourself with, you know, people uh, who are draining energy from you? It's so true. Um, and I like that you threw that caveat in there of don't usurp all of their time because that's not fair either. Right. Um, you know, it's, it, one of the things that I, that I love about our company and our office in particular is that we've got agents such a, such as yourself that are willing to hop on, you know, for almost an hour and just answer questions and, and, yeah. you know, pour your time and energy into, you know, the agents of our office. So, you know, we've got those folks that exist. Um, you know, I want to thank Lisa again for putting together sure. the amazing, you know, calendar that we have from now until the end of the year. Um, Q, you dropped some really amazing nuggets today and we so, so appreciate it. Uh, the time that you spent with us. And I can't wait to see what the numbers look like for you at the end of the year. I have a pretty good yeah. idea where you're going to land, but man, yeah. let's, you know, let's do it again in 2021. Imagine doubling what you did this year, next year. Holy yeah. cow. Yeah. It's, and it's you're going to do it. Much. The team that you're building, you're going to do it. You're going to get there. So, all right, guys, with that, we're going to bid Q adieu and I'm going to say goodbye to you guys, you guys, everybody for joining us today and have a fantastic rest of your day. Awesome. See you guys. Thanks, Q. Thank you. Are you very welcome?